Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I haven't been on for a while, I know. With everything going on in the world, I thought I'd take a break from all this. And I really wasn't planning on being on today, but just had something happen and just really wanted to come out and talk about it. It just got me thinking about a lot of other things that are going on. First off, I'm a black guy. I mean, if you can't look and tell, well, you know, good on you for not seeing color. Now, I, I will admit I have, I've experienced racism. You know, it's been more of the subtle kind, you know, the look, a stare, you know, somebody might whisper. I w went into a restaurant one time and I walked past this lady uh, down uh, in between the seats and she grabs her purse and moves her purse to the other side like I'm about to just run off with her purse in the middle of a crowded restaurant. So, you know, stupid stuff like that. I mean, I will admit I have, I can count on one hand and still have maybe a couple of fingers left over the times where I've had that overt racism. That, you know, when someone's in your face calling you the N-word or threatening to beat you up because you're black. You know, I will admit I've had, you know, I've lived a lucky life because of that. I know some people who have had it way more than I have and you hear those stories and as a African-American male, it shocks me that that kind of thing exists, but we see it all the time. And so I know it's out there, but again, I'm lucky I haven't experienced it that much. So I'm a little out of shape. So I'm trying to get into shape. And so I will do this one lap in my neighborhood. It's about three quarters of a mile just to walk around the block. But it takes me right back in front of my house. And when I'm being lazy, you know, after one or two laps and I get tired, it's real easy to just, you know, run into the house real quick and just say, well, you know, I'm here, I might as well go on in. So I decided to take my, my act out on the road. So I'll go out, out of the neighborhood and walk up the actual road. And I, you know, playing stop signs and there are a couple of stop lights. And right now, people are rolling the windows down, honking a horn, talking about, hey, how you doing? You know, being really nice, which is, is great. You know, they're being supportive of the movement and all that. What's kind of funny is that I will have complete strangers come up and talk to me. You know, when I'm in a grocery store, come up and want to see how I'm doing, want to, you know, quick chat with me. But yet, I still have people at work, when I say good morning to them, look me dead in the eye and just turn and walk away. You know, after I, I speak and say good morning. It, it is what it is, people who are people. But anyway, so I'm out for a walk today and at a, at a, a red light and just one car rolls the window down and say, you know, black lives matter and drives off. Thank you. The car right behind them, you know, was a couple of, you know, people, I would say a little bit of drunk or just full of hatred, whatever, you know, said all lives matter, you know, call me the N-word. And then one of them threw, you know, a half empty can of beer at me. It missed me, you know, because moving car, bad aim, probably drunk, you know. But what is it that makes somebody want to do that? I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I mean, we aren't born hating each other. Why are we taught that? I, I, I don't hate anybody based on their color. I don't hate anybody based on their religion. I would prefer to get to know you and then I, I would, wouldn't mind hating you. But I, I would need a reason and I would hope that you would have a reason too. And again, it's one thing to say words to people. People can be ugly. People can say whatever all they want. You know, but the act of throwing something at somebody, trying to injure them, and just not caring. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I, I just, I just don't understand that. Um, I mean, I've dated in my race, outside of my race, I mean, my, my, I have two boys and they're both mixed and 
now. Some people will probably hate me just because I have mixed kids. And, and that's fine, you know. Hate me all you want. You know, I, a couple nights ago, I made a mistake of watching one of the videos. Well, maybe I made a mistake, but I watched one of the videos on Facebook that show what looks like, you know, the police harass, you know, the white police officer harassing the, the black person at a traffic stop or pulling them over for no reason. And on Facebook, if you let that run, then it'll show you the next video. And they, and they kind of show you, you know, similar videos in that same vein. See, next thing I know, 45 minutes later, I've seen maybe 10 different videos that are just pretty much all the same. You know, the cop or cops, you know, walking up on a black guy coming out of his own house. You know, you got the guns drawn saying, oh, well, you seem suspicious. And it, it shocks me, just some of the things you see, because that worries me because, you know, I live in what is considered to be a good neighborhood. And if something wants to happen and I call the police, are they going to look at me as the criminal first before they, you know, investigate anything else? <sighs> Racism has been around forever, you know, and people, they're doing the protests now, they're, you know, there's rioting going on, there's all of this happening with the Black Lives Matter movement. But my question is, how do we fix it? I mean, I'm ignorant. I have no idea how we fix this whole situation. I mean, how do you fix decades of teaching? You know, these people, that sounded wrong when I said these people, but people are raised thinking, I don't know, that they're, they're better than me because their skin is white and mine is black. I mean, is that, what it, what it amounts to. I mean, does it have to do with the fact that your ancestors own my ancestors? I don't know. I mean, could... Ha! And I'm so frustrated right now, I, just, I, don't even know, I don't even know what to say. But again, how do we stop being racist? What, what are we doing? I mean, people can pass all the laws they want, but if the police aren't gonna enforce them, if the justice system's not gonna enforce them, then what good does that do? I mean, to Breonna Taylor, and I'm just gonna go off on a tangent here, Breonna Taylor was asleep in her house, shot by the cops when they entered. That says to me that they were planning on shooting regardless of who was in there. If they had the right house, they were gonna shoot. They had the wrong house, they shot it up anyway. They didn't take time to confirm the identity of anybody in the house. She was killed. George Floyd, people say, oh, well, he was committing a crime. He got what was coming to him. My point is, my, my, my thoughts on this is we have a justice system. So if he was committing a crime, arrest him properly, take him to jail, hopefully the justice system will work everything out. The only thing I know is that not everyone is bad. Not every cop is bad. Not every white person is bad. Not every black person is bad. Not every Hispanic, Native American, you know, they're not, everybody's not all bad. You know, it's, it's only those few bad apples, but that's the thing, you see so many of those bad apples. It, one of my problems is that you, you see these things on video, and it's never just the one cop, it's multiple cops. So it's nobody, is, do all of those cops still think the same? I mean, everyone's like, oh, there are good cops out there. And I really feel that they do, but if I see six cops in a video, harassing somebody, did all six of the bad cops get the same call? Do they run around in a pack? Are they a clique at work? I mean, because they think, you know, the same way about the world? 
I mean, why is it you never see a cop telling the other cop, hey, that might be too much. Hey, you might be going a little too far. When I first saw the video of George Floyd, I was upset because, you know, the cop's kneeling on his neck and his partner is standing, you know, keeping the other people at bay from messing with him. Okay, still terrible, but then I saw the reverse angle of that same video, where then you see the two other cops holding George Floyd now while the other guy is on his neck and his partner is standing up keeping everybody at bay. So all four of those cops were bad. Not one of them was decent enough to be like, okay, I think that's enough. <sighs> I know people are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. That's what this channel is about. It's about me expressing my opinion. You have the opportunity to express yours. I'm not going to call you names. Hopefully you don't call me names. But again, how do we fix this? Because I have two boys that are, you know, late teens, ready to be out on their own almost. And I, I'm fearful for them. Hell, I'm afraid for myself. I drive down the street. I see a police car pull up behind me. I'm mentally got, got a checklist going. It's like, okay, license, you know, in my wallet, registration, insurance in the glove compartment. And I'm checking the speed, you know, I'm checking my speed limit. I'm making sure that, you know, I come to a complete stop before I, I do anything. And, and that's terrible. I mean, did you see the video on YouTube about the little kid who's playing basketball in his yard? The cop pulls by his yard. He goes and he hides behind the SUV. And that's terrible that we are thinking like that. It's terrible that I got to have a conversation with my kid and tell him, whenever you leave the house, my goal is I want you to come home. If a cop pulls you over, I want you to, you know, hands on the steering wheel. You know, I want you to look forward. I want you to be polite. And, you know, just make it out of there alive. And that's terrible that I got to have that conversation because I'm fearful that my kid is not going to make it home. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going to happen with the world. You know, I'm not going to blame any particular person because this kind of stuff's been going on for the longest time. It's just people, I'll be honest, they've gotten more, you know, bold since, you know, Donald Trump took off. And I'm pretty sure people agree with me. And a, a lot of times, I feel that that is why people voted for him is because he thinks the way they think. And so they get to go out and do whatever it is they want with no repercussion. But back to my kid for a second. You know, so I'm telling him to do everything that's asked of you by the policeman and to, get to make it home. But even then, there have been cases, you know, in the videos where someone was doing everything they were told to do and they still ended up shot still ended up dead following the letter of the law and yet they still get shot or hurt somehow the police are supposed to have specialized training to de-escalate situations you know training in how to remain calm in dangerous situations you know, they're armed. They, they have several weapons. Nightstick, taser, you know, handgun. They probably got shotguns and assault rifles in their vehicles. So they definitely have the upper hand. But somehow, we as civilians are expected to be the ones to remain calm in a dangerous situation. You got somebody pulling you over, got a gun drawn on you. You know, again, bypass several things. Get your stun gun, get your, you know, get your taser no they go straight for the handgun the deadliest weapon they have and we're supposed to remain calm someone points a gun at me I'm ready to run or at least defend myself especially when I know I've done nothing wrong but I have two kids and so my goal is the same as it is theirs to make it home at night so again I'm sitting here thinking what can we do I, I can't even make any suggestions I mean can you just not be racist? Can you 
justify the racism? I mean, maybe, I don't know. I feel stupid for saying this, but you know, can we sit down and have a conversation about why you hate my skin color so much? I was always taught that racism is about being in a position of power. I saw some, someone told me that, you know, black people can't be racist because we, we're never really in a position of power. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. All I know is I'm not racist. Never been a racist. I've, I've dated outside my race. I've dated my race. I've dated people. I have people I consider friends in all races. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, I got that one white friend. No, I, I have a bunch. I have two. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. Um, I am so frustrated because someone looked at me walking down the street, headphones on, minding my own business, and decided to chuck a half empty beer can at me, you know, call me the N word and move on. You know, not concerned whether it would have hurt me or not. I mean, half empty beer can thrown at you could do some damage. You get hit with an empty can, that's going to hurt. All I know is it makes me angry the more you see these things, the more you hear about it. And it's probably been going on forever. But now everyone has a, a smartphone with a camera on it, so everything's getting reported. It's, it, it's all getting out there. But the, the, the bad part is no one seems to care that it's getting out there. I mean, you hear about new, like in the Breonna Taylor, they've gotten, that one city has gotten rid of no-knock warrants. But again, they have to enforce that. That means the DA, the judge, the police, they have to follow those rules. So if they haven't, you know, if they go and they break down somebody's house, even though they have a no-knock warrant, even though they're not allowed to do that anymore because of the warrants are gone. Someone has to prosecute. If people can get arrested, they can even get indicted. But until you're tried and convicted, you still they still have a pretty good chance of walking out. You know, Rodney King said it a long time ago. Can we all just get along? <laughs> I gotta tell you, I feel like a fool for saying that. Because it just seems like some people don't want to get along. I don't want to get along. I want to get along with you. I want you to get along with me. At least until we get to know each other and you have a reason to dislike me. And don't worry, you, if, if you know me long enough, you'll find a reason. I mean, I've pissed people off left and right. I mean, if you can come up with an idea of how we can fix this, please just leave it in the comments below. I've gone to peaceful rallies. You know, when people ask me questions, I try to give honest answers about the situation and how it affects me and how it affects my kids. Conversation and communication, I hope, are the ways to get through all of this. But both sides have to be ready to listen. And there is a lot of anger and hatred out there. And it's coming from high up. It's coming from down low. It's coming from the left and the right. It's coming from everywhere. Racism may not be as big as I think it is, but it's definitely, and it's definitely bigger than what a lot of other people think it is. You know, I saw on Facebook, um, someone had a meme and it said that the people who are screaming all lives matter are kind of like the founders when they created the country saying all men are created equal while they were owning slaves. Okay, I have talked long enough. Um, thank you. If you made it this far, listen to me ramble on. I appreciate it. And again, if you have an idea of what we can do to fix the world, you know, drop it in the comments. I will respond and maybe a couple of people having a conversation can start a change in the world. All right. Thank you. And you yeah, have a good night.